the beginning of a new year at this age and this time. Behold, I say to you that all, all that matters in this new year is what you do with me. Draw near to me, saith the Lord. I'm the only strength and peace that goes through the storm. Behold, I say to you, the year ahead of you, there will be many storms. There will be situations that you do not want to go through on your own or by yourself. I say to you, draw nigh unto me. Just as I looked over Jerusalem and cried for them, that I would gather them unto me as a hen doth her chicks in the storm. Behold, I say to you, my church, just like that, I love you. And I say to you, draw nigh unto me. I will put out my arms and draw you into my breath, saith the Lord. For I love you more than anything in this whole universe can even begin to imagine. I long after you, my church, my bride. Come unto me, draw near unto me. For I say to you that no matter what the storm, the winds may blow, the problems may arise. But in me, I say to you, there is peace. There is comfort, there is strength, and there is security in, security in me, and that's the only place you're going to find it, saith the Lord. Yes. Well, I don't think the devil wanted me to let you know there's security in him. Because he wants you to stay in turmoil and in trouble. He wants you to be fearful and upset all the time. Because security will be a problem this year. But I say to you, there will be security in Christ. Yes. Yes. Yes.
time that we always kind of, as Jerry said, reevaluate. You can't fix the problems that you've already had over the past. You can't even fix yourself to get good enough to come to Jesus. I'm so glad to tell you that you've just got to know his arms are outstretched. He's not telling you, now get that fixed and then come nigh to me. He's saying, just come. Just as you are without one plea, but that the blood of Jesus was shed for you. That's the only way we can come is by his blood. Not because we ever get good enough. Not because we ever can do everything just right. But because he has already done everything just right. And he is good enough. And he loves you enough to draw you unto him. So all you have to do is just say, Lord, here I am. I'm coming. Draw me. I'm willing. And God will draw you in a fresh way. If I wanted to say anything about 23, it personally drew me into a deeper relationship of prayer with the Lord and a greater desire to spend time in His presence than I've ever known. And I've always believed and strongly believed in prayer. But the Lord has drawn me this year into a deeper measure of prayer. And He's going to do it again this year in 24, deeper, deeper. We never get full of Jesus. We never get through it's an ongoing process until we see him. We won't be through. He'll be working in us forever. Lord, we come to you for every person in this room. You're the healer, oh God. You went to the cross. You wore stripes in your back until we could see your backbone, Lord, clear to the skin, beaten so severely. But you bore it all in your body, Lord, for the purchase of our healing. So, Lord, we don't look to our perfection and our goodness, but we look to your perfection and your goodness this morning. We pray that healing virtue flow like a river across this place. That every life be touched powerfully, Lord, with that healing power of Almighty God. Lord, do the work that you want to do. Bring about this healing in your way and your time, oh God, for each one of these, Lord. And there are some that are not here who are sick or part of our body. Lord, we cry out to you for their healing and their health as well. Minister to them all, I pray, oh God, in a powerful way. Lord Jesus, we just give you each of us in this place. Be glorified through us. Lord, the reason we want to be well and healthy is to be a more effective warrior in the army of the Lord, to do what you want us to do, to be led by your spirit, oh God, because you are faithful. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord this morning? It sort of feels like the first day of the year, but it's not. This is the last day of 23, of course. Tomorrow will be that first day of the year. Anybody making any resolutions? Anybody making any resolutions? It wasn't a trick. <laughs> it's not wrong to make them realizing that it's only God that helps us to do them. By His grace and mercy, those things that we need to do. And there should be, you know, the reason we make resolutions should be to further the kingdom of God. Any way that I can be used to be a better servant in the kingdom of God, that should be my desire. If I want to be healthier, then it should be so I can be strong in, in being a servant of the Lord. It's a good reason for it. Amen. So good to have all of you at Oasis of Love this morning on this holiday time. And I know sometimes it's hard to break away from everything, but thank you all for coming to the house of the Lord today. We appreciate from the bottom of our heart. Thank the Lord that he's the one who blesses us with the ability to get every dime that we have in our pocket this morning. It is in him. We live and move and have our being. Without that, we could not make any money. And so um, if he gave me money this week, thank the Lord for it. He's blessed you abundantly for everything. And so many of you are so faithful to support Oasis of Love. And we appreciate it from the bottom of our heart. Thank you for your faithfulness to give. And so we're going to be receiving the morning time and offerings. Just
thank you for giving and thank you for your faithfulness uh, to the house of the Lord and, and to the, as unto the Lord when you give here. And so you, you, you have made it where uh, we could just make it. You know, we, 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 we may wonder sometime how it's going to go. And the next thing you know, then somebody gets blessed and they give tithe and offering on it. And, and it just helps us right on through. It takes care of the expenses and everything else and, and that, that are always ongoing and, and that are always there. And you've got them too. And, uh, but as Francis said, thank the Lord for the privilege of God blessing what we put our hands to, you know, and, and blessing us financially. And um, uh, I, I've, I've got a friend of mine that if, you know, that, that I know and, and he's talked to me quite a bit about being in a big bind and being in, and, and, and I, I just, so far, I just hadn't really popped a question to him. And that question is, is well, do you give to God? <laughs> you know, and, and if, if I was not even serving God, you know, if I was not even a Christian, I found out what I, how, how many of you believe God's got certain uh, laws, principles or whatever of his law, of his word, and I knocked that one off. You know, I believe, I hate to use the word that works regardless, but you know, the, one of them is, if we give, it shall be given. How many of you know, whatever you sow, you'll reap? You know that? You believe that? Uh, there's, there's laws that God's got that he's put into existence. And, and I mean, it's simple. Little, little bitty things prove it. Uh, look at somebody right now and give them a big old smile. <laughs> See what some of them got? Some of them got a laugh and a giggle. <laughs> and you get a smile back. And you treat people nice, so they'll treat you nice. You know, you reap what you sow. And if you're kind to people, they're kind to you. And if you're mean to people, they have a tendency to be mean to you. How, how many of you know what I'm talking about? How many, how many of you ever had somebody be mean to you a little bit? Sort of mean, ugly, nasty. And you wanted to react that same way back, didn't you? About the time Jesus kicked in and said, uh uh. <laughs> I said, love, love your enemy. But, you know, there's things, and, and you know, I, this one guy I was talking about talks about being in a bind, being in a bind, and I know there's some, some uh, funds come across his path in a big way, and uh, I never heard him talking nothing about giving some of it, you know, giving the tithe on it. And, you know, the Word of God is clear. The tithe is the Lord's. It belongs to the Lord. That's what he said. The tithe belongs to the Lord. And he said, will it be seed or harvest or the land or what fruit or the cattle or whatever it is? It just, it just means of how people make it or how they earn extra or, or income or how they uh, multiply or whatever. But when we do, we need to consider God in all that. And thank the Lord for you that do that. And I believe, I believe most of you do, maybe all of you. I, I really don't know, but what I'm saying, if you're struggling in an area, even in finances, then purpose in your heart to study a little more about it and read and see what God has to say on the subject and then get, get the blessings of the Lord. You know, the Bible says that when we bring our tithe into the storehouse, and a lot of time people will say, well, that, that's under the law. No, it ain't. It was before the law. You know, Abraham, uh, uh, Abraham gave tithe before Moses was the lawgiver. Abraham was paying tithe and, and giving tithe and some of the old economy of God. And that was before the law was ever given. So it's not under the law. It's, oh, yeah, it was during that time. But Jesus even said when they come and said, we pay tithe and do this of this and that and the other and all this still gold and mirth and all kind of stuff. Jesus said, this is Matthew 23, 23. He said, these things you ought to have done. You ought to have paid your tithe. That's what Jesus was saying. Said, they said, we pay tithe. They were acting real holy. We give and all this and we give this, give that. He said, you ought to have done that and not to have left the other undone. Like the weightier matters of the law, which are of the law. Then Jesus fulfilled the law, kept the law, and fulfilled the law uh, to the letter, actually, during that time until... Uh, the cross, you know, praise the Lord for that. Now we're living in grace. But, but he said, he said that uh, these things you ought to have done and not left the other undone. So we ought to have love and judgment and mercy toward people. Uh, how many of you believe that? You sow mercy, you'll reap mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. You know, 
And, and so don't be hard on people. Don't be mean and ugly to people. Uh, show them mercy. Treat them like you'd like to be treated. You know, and then, then we reap. We reap what we sow. And uh, so, uh, but, but, you know, one of them, the Malachi, I just love this. He says that when we bring our tithe and offering in the storehouse, so this is a blessing that you can expect for you that do this. And some of you don't have to necessarily come up here. Some of you give by, we have an app on the uh, phone. I mean, well, yeah, it's on the phone, but on Facebook or whatever. And, and I don't even know about all that stuff. I think it's called tithing. Some people give by that every week and so, and every month or whatever. And, and we appreciate that. But it says when we bring it in, regardless of how we bring it in or how we give it, but when we do that, it says, prove me. God said, prove me now here with saith the Lord of hosts. If I'll not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings, there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I like the bonus that he kicks in. Have you ever worked for a company where they throw the bonus in sometime? Nobody? Few people? Okay. And the bonus is, he said, and guess what? Not only will I open you the windows of heaven and pour you out blessing, there shall not be room enough to receive it. But he said, I'll even rebuke the devourer for your sake. Has anybody ever gone through a life, I mean, part of your life where it seemed like every time you turned around, uh, you, your finances was being devoured? Something was happening, something was breaking, tires were blowing out earlier than normal, insurance, somebody broke an arm or something or whatever, but you know, uh, you had things break down, your refrigerator didn't last long, the washer didn't last. Have you ever had anything devouring your finance sometimes? Well, you know, the Lord said when we bring our tithe and offering in, not only he'll open the windows of heaven, that he would rebuke the devourer for our sake. How many of y'all feel like God has put you several times under open windows of heaven this last year? You really, you really feel. How many of you feel like he, dev he devoured, uh, I mean, he took care of the devourer for your sake a few times on something that could have devoured maybe your finances and all. You know, see, that, that's, the, that's the promise of God. That's the blessings of God. And, and so, and, and a, another one he, that I like on the giving, uh, he said, if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. But if you sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. You know, and if a farmer plants a little seed, he's going to have a little harvest. But if he plants a lot of seed, then he's going to have a bountiful harvest. You understand what I'm saying? So let, let's not, I, I, want to, I want to encourage you, not that you don't or not whatever, but please don't be chinchy with God if you don't want him chinching with us. How many of y'all want the open windows of heaven? Man, I praise the Lord for it, don't you? I think it'd be good if we just give him a, a hand right now because God's been so good to us, bless us so much. And, and you know, I, I tell people, I tell people all the time, you know, they'll, they'll say something about me. Here, it seems like I don't know what the deal is. Here lately, they'll, they'll uh, some people will talk about my age sometimes. Like they think I'm an old man or something. Do I look like an old man? Oh, y'all said that now. Y'all going to get out at 12 for sure today. No, hey, I'm, I'm cutting up. But, but you know, I, 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 I can't help but do this because I mean it. I feel that way. Uh, people will go to talking about their, and most of the time they open the conversation up, they'll say, whoo, pretty soon in a year or two, I'm going to be 70 years old. I wish I could say that. <laughs> and then, then I'll tell them, well, in, in a year or two, I'll be 80 or almost 80. You know, it, won't, it, won't, it won't be that long. But you know what I'm thankful for? And normally every time I wind up and tell them, I thank the Lord so far. I've never spent a day in the hospital yet. I've never had surgery. You know, I thank the Lord for that. I praise the Lord for that. His goodness and his mercy has been so good to me. Amen. I've, and a lot of people I'll share that with and they go, well, I wish I could say that. And here some of them are in their 50s or in their 40s. And they've had multiple surgeries and everything. And I thank the Lord for that. Then 
Um, God's just been so good to me. He's just blessed me so much. But again, numbers of times during the day, a lot of time, I'll say, Lord, thank you for my health and breath and strength and life. And yesterday I was witnessing to a, a waitress and, and, and I told her, I said, you know, it's in him that we live and move and have our being. It's because of God that we have good air to breathe or that we can breathe with our lungs. It's God that keeps this old heart ticking. I'm going to tell you something. It's God that spared uh, 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 Gary uh, here when he was working on our house. When I seen him coming down the steps and he had a heart attack, uh, you know, on his widow maker. It's God that spared him. It's God that kept him alive right now. It's God that's kept Eddie alive. He, I, I didn't even know for a while he had a bad heart, but he said, I knew he had a mean heart sometime, but I knew, you know, we all have one and I'm cutting up. But, but you, know, I, I, you know, I didn't know, but, and there's many of you. I know Mike, Mike's had some heart trouble and all, and uh, Young had, had a little bit of trouble with something, you know, a stroke and stuff. How many of you God's done something big for, like cancer or stroke or a heart attack? Isn't it amazing? Let's give him another hand. Isn't God good? Isn't God good about rebuking the devourer? Praise God. In, any of you have gone through surgery, but yet you had a speed of recovery. Isn't it, isn't it awesome? And, and with, without hardly complication. Praise God for that. We serve such a, a great God, you know. And even when we need to be healed of something, or if we did have surgery, we can pray and God can give us a speedy recovery, you know. We can pray for people, the Bible says, and they shall recover. So, you know, there's so many benefits of the Lord. Forget not all his benefits. The Word of God says, 103rd Psalm, forget not, forget not all his benefits. I don't know about you, but man, I, I wouldn't trade serving Jesus for nothing, would you? I'm just not going to, I don't plan on quitting him, do you? I don't plan on stopping. I want to serve him until I draw my last breath. And God is so good. God's blessed us so much. How many of you have had a good time? over the holidays. You, you really had a good time. You just enjoyed it. How many are you glad it's over? Okay, I'll, I'll, have, to, I'll have to raise both hands. I had a great time and I'm glad it's over. Okay, and uh, uh, somebody asked me the other day, two or three people after Christmas and all, and I think it was on Friday, and I said, well, we got an empty nest now. So <laughs> they they, they knew what that meant. We, we had, and we're so thankful to have Kathy over and Dave for uh, a few days, and uh, we don't get that very often. And then I'm so proud and so happy and so thankful that my daughter and the son-in-law, of course, and y'all know her as Jerry, uh, lives here with us and helps us in the church and one of our ministers and appreciates so much. And I'm so thankful, I, I, I can't even say this enough, that I've got two daughters and two son-in-laws that love the Lord. And I really believe with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I thank the Lord for that. We're blessed, see. Not, not only have I not been in the hospital and had surgery, uh, I want you to know I've had my, my family have served the Lord, and I thank the Lord for that. Praise God for it. Amen. And uh, I appreciate and I give the Lord the credit, honor, and glory. It's, it's nothing to attribute to me or, or to Francis, uh, except they just happened to be born to us and we were churchgoers. <laughs> I've, I've uh, uh, you know, I've gone to church before, one time in South Carolina when I was moving, I couldn't find my shoes. And I put a pair of socks on and come anyway to a pretty good sized church out in, uh, 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 Columbia, South Carolina, the capital of, of, of Columbia, uh, I mean of South Carolina, and uh, I wore socks. I was going to come to church. Friends said, are you going without shoes on? I said, I'd go barefoot if I had to. And, uh, and I had a daddy, too, that raised me that way. I had a daddy that when he had to work, even if he had to work and the church was going on during the running season of the oil mill, daddy would come, and when he walked in, everybody got hungry. That, that oil mill smells, how many of y'all know that oil mill smell when they're cooking that cake and making those pellets, that smell that puts out, you know, it's that 
meat part of the cotton seed. And well, daddy'd walk in, he might have a little of oil on him that come out of a, that they cook with. They cook with him and they do other things with it. But uh, man, he'd smell, it'd make you hungry when daddy come in. But I don't care if there was 15 minutes left of the service, you know, maybe the message or, or less, or if the preacher was fixing to give an altar call, if daddy got off, soon he got off. Then on that Sunday, if he had to be there, he'd come to church. And then he would not leave until that last person left that altar. I can just see daddy in my head right now, sitting on that altar ball and squalling one hand up, one hand on the person that needed prayer. And daddy praying and many, many times praying in the spirit and just praying for, for those people in church. I was raised that way. We, we didn't look for excuses to miss church. We, we couldn't wait till it was church time. So, um, and then thank the Lord, uh, my, I've been blessed. I've just been blessed. And, and if, and if you can't, don't have that testimony, I hate it for you, but I want you to keep praying, keep believing God, because someday I believe God is able. His arm is not short that he can't reach out to him, and neither is ear heavy that he won't hear us when we're praying for those that are lost. We have some grandchildren that are lost. We, I have nieces and nephews that are lost. I, you know, and most of, how many of y'all have lost people? And, and let's not forget this week when we're having a week of prayer and fasting uh, to call those names before the Lord, you know, and, and believe him to save them and bring them, in, bring them in before it's eternally and everlasting too late because one of these days is going to be too late and, and to get in in time to go in the rapture. And then I want to encourage you again, you know, Jerry's done this and there may be a few others have done this. I want to encourage you, you better sit down and have a talk with your lost family. You better sit down and talk to them and tell them, you know, you better, when you get an opportunity and tell them, say, look, I know y'all right now, maybe whether they don't care about God or they're not making time for God, but, and some of you may think, you know, some, some of our family may think us that we're no fuddy duddy or, or, or whatever, you know, and I just use that term loosely, but, but let them know that the rapture really is going to take place, whether they believe it or not. And that if it does take place, then I want to encourage you, whatever you do, do not, once the world system gets completely in place and the one monetary system and all that where people can't buy or sell or trade, but the book of Revelation talked about when the church is gone, that people will have to take what they call the mark of the beast. And, and do not take that mark in order to buy or sell or trade, because if you do, the Word of God says you're doomed sealed. There's no getting out of it then if you go with the world system after the church is gone. So encourage them. And, and they'll know, how many of y'all believe they'll know when the Lord comes? You know, they, they might not hear, the, they won't hear the trumpet. I don't believe they'll hear the trumpet of God sound, but they'll call mama or they'll call daddy or they'll call papa or they'll call Nana or Nina or they'll call grandpa or grandma or they'll even go to the house when they can't get a phone number you know, they will, they will try to get a hold of us whenever the trump of God sounds. And guess what? When they do come to our house, if you've got a gate and the gate's locked, it'll be locked. If you've got a truck, the truck will be sitting there. If they break in your house, unless they have a key, they'll find your key still there. They'll find the lights on. They'll find the television on. If that's how you were whenever the Lord came, and you, they will, they will not find you. They will look. They will call your name. They will holler. They'll see if you're in the bathroom. They'll see if you're out in the backyard. They will go everywhere, and pretty soon they'll begin to panic. Because guess what? We'll be gone when the trump of God sounds. And then, buddy, the tribulation period will start in. Not immediately. It won't be horrible right then, but it's going to be bad. But they will realize that what we've been telling them, and maybe they come to church with you on a special day and they heard some preacher preach a gospel, and then they'll realize, wait a minute, this, this is reality. It really happened. And then plus, if they, they'll say, well, you know, I remember old grandpa and grandma, man, they served the Lord. I'm going to go to cemetery. Or either maybe they're old enough and their mom and dad's already gone. They're going to go to cemetery. And I honestly believe, this is just my opinion, but I believe the graves are going to burst open to those people that were ready to go. Just to be a witness, uh, because when Jesus uh, on the cross, there were seen above more than 500 of the brethren, the prophets, and the people of God up walking around Jerusalem before the Lord took care of them 
when he died on the cross. So I got a feeling, and graves burst open, you know, when the earthquake, remember? And, and the Lord, so I, I just got a feeling there's going to be a bunch of disrupted graves out there of the people that died in Christ. And then people will know. And then they'll start talking about it. You know, at first they'll talk. There's been a strange phenomenon. There's, we don't know what in the world happened. There's the thousands missing. There's thousands, you know, in the population of the world. Now, it, it'll be few compared to the big population. But still, they'll say, people are missing. We don't know where they're at. People are calling in. Have they seen your mom and daddy, your grandpa, your grandma, your uncle, your aunt? What a brother or sister. And people are missing by the thousands, by the thousands. Well, guess why they're missing? because the trump of God will sound one day, and then we're going to be gone. So talk to your family that may not be ready. You're, you're not judging them. Just tell them, say, hey, right now you don't have time for God. That's something I talked to that girl about, my stupid time chart. I said, don't say you ain't got enough time, because you've got seven days a week, 24 hours a day, that's 168. And if you only went to church for two hours on Sunday morning, you still got 160 six hours left over to do what you want. Every day period has eight hours of work, eight hours of goof off, eight hours to, to sleep. Or it's got six hours of sleep and 10 hours to do this. And, and most people, you know, some people work eight hours a day, you know what I'm saying? But some people are just there for eight hours and they don't really even work. And some people may go 16 hours. I've gone to many a 16, 18 hour days. I've gone some 20 hour days and some of y'all have too. But do you do that all the time? No, you don't. Everybody's got 24 hours a day. So we do what we want to do, don't we? We, we do, we fish, we hunt, we golf, we go to Walmart. Come on now, we watch TV. We do exactly what we want to do. And I want to encourage you this year, let's take time out for God. You know, he took time out for us. You know, put some time, build some time in your schedule uh, to serve the Lord, you know. And so, as we enter into this, this new year, I, you know, you heard the message. I honestly believe that we are going to be facing some things that we never dreamed we'd face. And, and I do not know. I, I even think that even the, the border problem that we've got with people infiltrating our land could create a serious problem. It really could before, before you know it, if you don't watch out. Once a little organization starts happening with certain people, certain things, certain governments elsewhere, there is no telling. And you'd be surprised sometimes what people even in America are wanting to happen and would like to see happen. So, so we need to pray as never before. How many of you believe that we need to pray? We, we really need to pray. You know, we need to pray. We need to be vigilant. We need to be on guard. We need to be ready, you know, and, and, and we need to be alert. We don't need to have our heads stuck in the sand. We need to be careful. I, I, want, to, I want to encourage, let, let me just say this. I want to encourage, and some of you are worried that I'm going to start preaching a little bit and then just keep on preaching. I won't. I promise I'll let you go. When I get through, I'll let you go. I'll let you go right at 12 noon, okay, whether I'm through or not. I promise. I promise you this morning I'll do it. I know one or two of you are scared. You'll all break your promise. No, I'm not. I'm going to let you go at 12, whether I'm through or not. But you, <coughs> you lady folks, okay, let me talk to you a minute. When you're traveling by yourself or when you, when you go someplace or to a parking lot, be careful. Even circle around a time or two if you can. Try to get you a closer place, but be careful. And don't, and don't just, you know, lollygag around. I mean, boy, grab that purse and pull it up if you've got to carry that purse. And... Yes, Lord. Say that none of my business? Yes, it is. <laughs> no, I wouldn't be saying that if it was him. I bumped my microphone. But it wouldn't hurt if you... Um, my wife, let me talk to my wife a minute. Honey, it wouldn't hurt if you carried something besides a suitcase around. <laughs> Carry something little that you could put. You wear pants a lot anyway. Put, put, no, that won't fit in your pocket. Put it in your front pocket, your driver's license and a little money and a little credit card and your keys. Put it in there. I mean, these thugs that are, that, that are getting bad in some cities, how many of y'all realize there's even stuff going on in America right now? They're stealing cars. Come on, they're hijacking cars. They're hijacking people's purses and money. 
And I, I say, people, you know, I could go to Walmart or go to Brookshire's and probably get me about 10 purses and that lady would never know that I got them till they looked back at their buggy. If it dawned on them then, then the purse was gone. They just leave their purse sitting around the buggy. How many of y'all, how many of y'all want me to shut up and quit trying to tell you how to act, how to do? How many of you are glad that I care? So, so okay, some of you are, most, most of you. So, so guard your stuff, but don't, and, and then when you walk, walk like you're, you know, don't walk like I do some days, like yesterday, I, my back was hurting me. And it's so funny how the anointing will hit me in the church service and worship and pray, and I don't even have no pain. Isn't that awesome? I'd pull my back a few weeks ago, and it'd kind of been giving me a fit. But, you know, walk like you're in charge and walk. Put some speed in your steps and go. And if you've got kids, man, get, be sure you know where those kids are at. Don't leave those kids there inducting children now and doing horrible stuff. So be careful. Be on guard. Be on guard when you go out, you know. And, and watch it, you know, get in your car. Don't fiddle around with your door. Don't get in there, shut your door and lock your door, you know, while you're doing whatever you're doing. Be careful. I love you. I, I thank God for you, but I want you protected. I want you okay. And I know God can protect us. And I know you got a husband that probably tells you the same stuff, but some of you probably never even heard it before. So, so be careful. And you guys be careful too. Uh, and help somebody that needs help if they need help, you know. So uh, let's, let's uh, do what we can to be, you know, be vigilant this year, be on guard, be sober, you know, be aware. It's like don't get lulled into like, oh, everything's okay, everything's just like. We need to be careful as we see the day approaching even more. Amen? Okay. Now, Turn with me to Second Chronicles, and again, you're going to get out in 15 minutes. Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 9. Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 9. She's got it up there, and I'm ready. We're fixing to read it. And it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon, and with them other beside the Amorites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea side Syria, and behold, <coughs> they be in Hazana Tamar, which is Engadai or something. Okay. Anybody can say these words better than me, you're welcome to. And, and you, you probably say them better than I can. But some of these words are not familiar to me in American. Okay. And Jehoshaphat feared to set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord, even out of all the cities of Judah. And, and they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord, God of our fathers, art not thou the God in heaven that rulest over all the kingdoms of the heathen? Now, I want you all to notice this. If he was then, he is now. So a lot of time you'll hear me say God's still in charge. I, he may not be, you know, doing things the way we think he ought to do, but I promise you, He's the one, if he was, he's the same yesterday and forever, and he changed not. He's the one that ruleth over all the kingdoms of the heathen. And in thy hand, listen to this, is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? He's still got that power and might. Might not exercise it all the time yet. Are not thou our God who didst drive out the inhabitants of the land before thy people Israel and gave us it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever? Aren't you the same God? And they dwell therein and have built thee a sanctuary there for thy name, saying, If, listen to this, if when evil cometh upon us as a sword, our judgment, our pestilence, our famine. Now listen, how many of you believe that God is the same God and that he's no respecter person? 
if when evil comes on us, as a sword or as judgment or pestilence or famine, we shall stand before this house and in thy presence. And by the way, let me just tell you something. We don't have to worry about going to a particular place anymore because we are the tabernacle of the Most High. We are a temple of the Holy Ghost now. So, see, we can just pray now and be in thy presence. He's in us. We're in him and he's in us. For thy name is in this house. And crying to thee in our affliction, then thou will hear and help. How many of y'all believe that? If when evil comes on us, he named like a sword or judgment or pestilence or famine, and we stand in this house in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and crying to thee in our affliction, then thou will hear us, and he'll help us. Man, don't we serve a mighty God? And, and you know, I honestly believe no matter what the circumstances, our God is still able to deliver. Amen. Amen. He's still the same God that when Daniel got through in the lion's den, he went in that den with him. He, he didn't spare him from going in the den. Do you understand that? Sometimes you're going to go through something. But he went in that den with him. And he closed them lion's mouth. That would have devoured him by the time he, before he even hit the floor, would have had him smashed all up with their teeth and chopped up in little pieces and been chopping their lips, man, licking their lips. But he went in there with them. You know, when David went out against Goliath in the name of the Lord, the Lord was with him. He, he delivered him from the enemy. He didn't deliver him from facing the enemy or fighting the enemy, but he was with him when he did get in that fight, when he got in that battle. And I, even a long time prior to that, when a big old bear come out and he was tending the sheep, and there was a lion that came out. And you know what he did? Well, they talked about the lion grabbed his beard. <laughs> but grabbed him and just ripped him apart. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. How many of you believe the Spirit of the Lord can come upon you and you can do things that ordinarily you couldn't do? Amen. Woo! Amen. If need be. When the enemy comes in, Isaiah says, like a flood, man, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up like a flood, raise up a standard against the enemy. Our God is able. When the bear come, I can't even imagine. You see so many situations where people, if you don't believe it, watch some of them on YouTube if you want to, where people face bears that are attacking them or that are, are trying to devour them or get them. I can't even imagine somebody being able to grab a bear and, and just yank his jaw out of whack and pull him. I, you know, it's just amazing. But the Spirit of the Lord coming on somebody. <laughs> Whenever somebody's needing deliverance, when one of his children are needing help. And I, I can't imagine. I can open our fireplace, even open the chimney to where nearly everything is drafting up a big old pipe where it's coming out and it's angled up there. And sometimes I still can't hardly stand in front of those hot coals and a little bit of flame that's still flaming there. I can't imagine being thrown in a big old fiery furnace that was heated up seven times hotter than what the it was designed or manufactured to be heated. They heated it up seven times hotter than what the factory specs was on it. And it was so hot that even when they were throwing the three Hebrew children, that all they did, it just would not bow down to the king's music. 
And that, that ought to tell us something. I don't think we ought to bow down to some things that's contrary to the... You know, I just hope they don't start trying to shut churches down again, but they, there's talk about it. And uh, they wouldn't bow down. And they got thrown in the fiery furnace. And the heat was so intense that guess what? Those soldiers of the king got burned up that didn't even get in the fire that were just trying to throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in there. And they had them bound. They throwed them in. And then guess what happened? <laughs> Three people got thrown in. And they got to looking as close as they could get, but they couldn't get there too hot. It done killed the guards that throwed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in. And the old king said, didn't we throw three in? But now I see four. And the fourth one looks like, who did he look like? The Son of God. I mean, he revealed himself to them back then even. He looked like Son of God. And I see four men loose and walking around. And when they got them out, the only thing got burnt was the ropes that had their wrists tied, their hands tied together, and they didn't even smell like smoke when they got out of there. That's what our God can do. I mean, if when evil comes, no matter what it is, God is able to keep his children. Amen? I believe it. I believe it. I'm, no matter what circumstances are, I believe God is bigger than any circumstances that we could be in. And, and the, you know, the, the Bible says here, and i got to hurry because now I've only got six minutes, and I've got some of y'all, I leaned over and got some interference. I've got some of y'all real nervous because some of y'all are hungry, and some of y'all are wondering if I'm going to lie. If I do, the Lord will forgive me if we confess our sin. Not planning on it. The great multitude came to Jehoshaphat, and the Bible says he was afraid and he feared. And what did he do? He decided to call for fasting and prayer. Now, you know, it's just kind of and the reason, one reason I was thinking this, and I believe the Holy Spirit wanted, that's what we're going to do this week. And I don't know how many of y'all are afraid of something. Be honest now, but be honest, afraid of something. You're either afraid there ain't going to be enough finances. You're afraid this deal's going to fall through. You're afraid somebody's got a little problem. It might be a horrible disease or something. Uh, you're, you're, you know, how many of y'all, again, I'm going to ask, how many of y'all are fearing something, afraid? And it's not that you're not a good Christian. I'm not trying to trick you. Okay, you know what we need to do? Like Jehoshaphat did. He made his mind up. He said, I'm going to seek the Lord and I'm going to pray. And I'm even going to call a fast. Now, we, we've asked, we've told you that we're going to be fasting and praying. And please realize, you don't have to give up food. But if you want to give up food, you can. Okay? There's different kinds of fast. You can fast TV. I'm going to be honest with you. Some of you would hurt you real bad if you fasted playing games on your iPhone or your whatever the other thing you call it. My wife, sometime, it might would hurt her if she quit pecking on the pad. I call it pad packing. She's picking on the pad, pecking on the pad, sitting there in that chair a lot. That's fine. She pecks out pretty pictures. She does some of that art stuff. Some of y'all like playing games. Some of y'all like hitting something. Go, I don't know what it's doing there, but it's doing something. Some of y'all could fast that. Some of y'all may want to fast food. Some of you may want to fast TV. But let me tell you something, God will honor whatever you want to fast this week. And I think, would y'all be glad to give up something for just one week and to give up a little bit of time just to pray, you know, a, a little bit? Now, please know you don't even have to come here to pray. You can pray at home, but there is something about a corporate prayer, okay, the anointing and all. So please, please remember, you can still pray even if you don't come here or if you can't come here. I realize some family settings, it'd be kind of hard, but 
Uh, so whatever you got to do, but set it, set your head, set your heart. Say, hey, I want to see something happen. There's something that I'm concerned about. Maybe you're not afraid. You don't like to use that word. But, you know, see the psalmist David did. He said, what times I'm afraid I'll trust the Lord. So let's trust the Lord with it. How many of you, y'all got some things you want to trust the Lord with? You know, there's other people maybe we can't trust, but we can trust the Lord. So let's make our mind up. You know, when the enemy's coming, however he's coming, let's trust the Lord. Now watch this. It says, I, li I like it on down. He says, uh, let, let me see what verse this is so you can look for it yourself if you want. Uh, and I didn't, I didn't move mine. Okay, verse 12 says, neither know we what to do but our eyes are upon you. You know, that, what better place to look when you don't know what to do than to look at the Lord? Let, let's purpose in our heart this year, we're going to keep our eyes on the Lord. We're, we're going to look to Him when we don't know what to do. Verse 18, you know what it says they did? It says they worshiped. And verse 19 says they praised and it also said something else that I think is important sometimes. It said with a loud voice. You know, we can tell a story. We can tell a friend about something happened. We were back here this morning talking about Jesse Rashel. I hope he watches this program. He'll call and ask what we talked about. I'll be glad to tell him. But Donald and Gary and I both were. And I promise you, you didn't have to say, what would you say? What would you say out of either one of us? Because we were talking in a loud enough voice that we could understand, couldn't we? Now, and then we get some time in, in prayer and we go, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Let's, let's start lifting our voice up before the Lord. Start, start praying. Praying, you know, with a loud voice, you know. I know it's, well, I don't believe we got a holler screen. God can help. He, you know, God, God's not deaf. And I promise you, you're right. God's not deaf. But I'll tell you something else he's not. He's not nervous neither. And, and let me just say this. If we go to a ball game or a sporting event and we get loud there, I think it's okay for us to lift our voice up enough where we can talk to the Lord. You know, just a little bit while we're praying. Come on now. We get excited about cars and trucks and boats and motorcycles and fast this and fast that and food and everything else. Let, let's start talking to God like that. It won't hurt. It won't scare anybody off. And, 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 and seek the Lord whenever there's situations and circumstances that are beyond our control that we need His help. And I promised I'd shut up, so... I'm going to shut up. Stand if you would. I'd like to go on. I'd like to go on and tell you that when the armies were sent out, before the armies, you know what they sent ahead of the armies? Carol, if you want to come, if you feel like it. Now, if you don't, be okay. You know what Jehoshaphat sent out? when they were going to battle before the armies, praisers. he sent out praisers. And you know, it says, and listen to this, and when they begin to praise the Lord, guess what God did? He set ambushments against their enemies. How many of y'all know you got an enemy? How many of y'all have seen the evidence of him trying to fight, whether it be in the family or whatever your circumstances? Well, begin to praise the Lord. Begin to praise him. That's more powerful than the armies with all their weaponry or whatever. It's more powerful. And when they begin to praise, he sent the worshipers and the praisers. Some of these little, some of these little sissies that you see in church sometimes. No, they're not really sissies, but you don't understand what I'm talking about. He sent them out to battle. He sent Harley. He sent some of the others. He sent Baylor. 
That wimp. <laughs> Couldn't hurt a fly. No, he's not a wimp, and he could. But he sent the worshipers and the praisers out, not the military men that were trained with swords and the cavalry, and now we would say the Air Force and the Army and the Marines and all that, okay? I left somebody out. But instead, he sent the worshipers and the praisers. And you know what they probably sing? I got a feeling I know the song. They got out before the army when they were fixing to be gotten. And they said, in all my life you have been faithful. Talking about their God. Come on. In all my life you have been so, so good. And with every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Okay, hold it just a minute, Carol. Hold it just a minute, and boy, you're doing a great job. I want anybody that's got something that you think the enemy is orchestrating against you, I want you to come to the altars and just help me sing that right now. And you can go. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not even going to come down and pray for you, but I just felt instructed to get you, get you up here around this front saying, God, you see me, I'm representing something, not necessarily that you're afraid of, but even if you are, you fear it's gonna happen or you fear it might happen and you don't want it to happen, we're gonna just praise right now. And, and if you wanna worship and praise some in the middle of it, go ahead right now. Because I just believe God's gonna set ambushments. God's gonna set ambushments because of this right here today, because of what you've done. He's gonna set ambushments against your enemy right now as you worship and praise him. Hallelujah. Man, I'm expecting great and mighty things to happen this year. How about y'all? Go ahead and give him a hand clap. Praise his name. Thank you, Lord. Sing it right now. Let the Lord set ambushments against you. Let him sit down. Yeah. 